In this motion graphics tutorial, we will use the repeater tool inside of Adobe After Effects to make this cool, looping, infinite pattern effect. Welcome to Creativity with DA3. That's me, I'm Don Allen III, and welcome to the show. Let's get started. We're inside of Adobe After Effects right now, and we have a lot of functionality. So uh, let's uh, start from scratch and just create a, uh, let's just do a new composition. All right, so we're inside of After Effects. We have our composition open. And the first thing you want to do is uh, create a background. So we can just do a new, a new solid. Um, you don't have to label it or whatever. I'm just going to uh, use a solid black background, hit OK. And so that just becomes a solid that you can see right here. If it helps, we'll label it background or just BG. Next, we're going to right click in this panel down here. This is our timeline. And we're going to create a new shape layer. All right, look at that. So it creates a new shape layer. Now these colors might look different depending on what version of After Effects you're on. But uh, yeah, so mine's just blue for the shape layer. Next, we're gonna uh, draw out a shape. So we can draw up any shape, but to keep it simple, I'm gonna go to our rectangle tool and make sure that my fill is set to something like white. And I'm just gonna draw a square. Now, uh, right, right now it's gonna scale all funky. If you wanna have it scale evenly, just hold shift and then it scales evenly on all sides. Cool, so we got this, uh, we got this square. Not really doing much when we hit play. So what we wanna do is first create a little motion out of this square. So I'm gonna hit the P on the keyboard. That's the shortcut for position. The other way for getting to that is toggling down the shape layer, going to the transform options and going to position. They're, they're the same way. I usually just hit the shortcuts. To start animation, we'll hit, a, we'll hit the stopwatch icon, and then we'll go a few frames forward and uh, maybe change the X position or the Y position of our shape. So I'm just gonna change the X right there and change the Y. And since we hit the stopwatch button, it put a, a keyframe on that frame as well. So we can just play it back. We have a little boring animation, wonderful. So what we're gonna do now is kind of just speed it up and I'm actually gonna go to our timeline, make it kind of loop faster, because right now it's gonna play 20 seconds through. But if we just drag our cursor here and hit the shortcut N, it'll drag the end of the timeline to where you have it. So you can kind of just sample your motion over and over again. I'm gonna make the movement a little bit more dramatic. So on that second keyframe, I'm gonna drag it something like over here. Okay, so now here's where the real magic happens. Because we used a shape layer, if we go to toggle down our menu, there's this little add button here. And if you click on it, you'll see that there's lots of really cool stuff. Now we're gonna be using the repeater tool today, but I encourage you to explore all those other ones. But today, the re repeater tool is gonna to be your best friend. It's super cool what you can do with it. So we're gonna to go to our repeater. And uh, um, what it did by default, if we toggle down our repeater, it by default made three copies of the same object and it offset them not very much and it kind of just changed their position. So we can now change this to be whatever we want it to be. So for starters, I'm going to change the scale. So now they get smaller the farther away they get, and I can change the position. Um, it might be easier if I kind of just slide our end position somewhere else so we can see this better. Again, I'm gonna to toggle down to our shape layer in our contents, and then go to repeater, and go to our copies. So we can increase the number of copies and the way the repeater tool works is it applies like a logarithmic, can't say that word, expression to an option. So it's gonna make the next one scale and the next one scale and the next one scale a little bit smaller and smaller. We can also add like rotation, right? So you can start to see where this is going. We can get some really interesting patterns this way. So next what I'm gonna do is kind of just play around increasing the copies, reducing the space between them, maybe not crazy on the scale. Let's just put the scale back to zero uh, um, percent. I'm going to go back to our shape layer and hit the shortcut S to bring up our scale and just scale this way down. Cool. I'm going to go back and into our contents repeater and then we're going to go to our, uh, our copies and increase the number of copies to like 60, 70, 75 maybe. Then we'll go down to our transform options and this is a kind of like an experimenting part of the process. So you will need to experiment. So let's actually set our scale to 100. And let's kind of play around with the rotation until we get something cool. Pretty neat. Now the next thing I wanna really 
interact with is our anchor point. And this is kind of where it's choosing to rotate or scale from. So if we move our anchor point to a very specific spot, I might want to move this over here and then move our anchor point to the left, we can start to have this almost stack on top of itself. And I'm going to make the position go back to zero. So what we just did there is now everything is stacked right on top of itself. So then we can just change the scale and look at that. You can kind of see where we're starting to get these crazy patterns. And, and, then, and, then, and then that has just that motion there. So that kind of just will keep doing the initial motion of that one shape layer. So to make this look cooler, we're going to need to add more movement and use a little bit of JavaScript. And JavaScript doesn't have to be too scary. We'll just do two little friendly expressions in a second. So we kind of got this thing working out now. Um, we have the shape. So one thing that we could change the animation of is our scale. So if we animate our scale the same way we animated that position, we could have this kind of vortex appearing and disappearing. So to emulate that or try it out, we go to the beginning of our timeline and we hit, a, we hit the stopwatch to set the scale. Then we're going to go into the future and then just change our scale a little bit. So now it will actually animate between those two. And I'm now starting to not feel that, that position move that we did earlier. So I'm actually going to go ahead and delete that. We don't, we don't need to use that position. Let's get rid of that. So now we kind of just have this scaling thing here. Pretty neat. It could be done, but I'm not done. Next, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to hit this button and see what our grid is or our, our safe action. This kind of brings up a little invisible grid. It might be a little hard to see. Might want to zoom in. Um, we also can change it to our proportional grid by going to here. So like right there is this absolute center of the canvas. So what I'm going to do is move the entire position of our spiral so that it aligns pretty squarely with that center. And now I'm going to bring up the title safe action. And actually I'm going to put it back on the grid, the proportional grid. There's so many cool nifty features. And we're just going to slide our position until we get into a good spot where this looks pretty centered. And when we play it, it looks pretty centered. We can even use that zoomed in part right there to really, really hone in on that zoom. Kind of just scrolling to zoom forward. I'm just going to move that up on the Y. And there we go. I think that is, that is dead in the center. Yeah. Right? Actually, we can get a little bit more. <laughs> Let's go scroll a little bit to the left and then move it a little down and then to the right there. Maybe one more. Bloop. Uh, I'm very precise about this. Okay, there we go. So that's, that's pretty zoomed in. Uh, let's turn off our grid by going to that little thing right here and turning it off. And now we can play our animation. We have this kind of scale thing. Now, the unfortunate thing is this, this doesn't loop. We're using the timeline view to loop so that in real life, it would only play once, right? It would just go through there and then it would be done. So what we're going to do to make this fun is we're going to type in a little bit of JavaScript. Oh boy. So what we're going to do on that scale, we're going to type in a looping JavaScript expression. So I'm going to zoom in over here. This is our scale. And what we'll do is we will option click or alt click if you're on a PC on the scale. And we're going to delete what's there. And we're going to write this expression loop capital O U T. So loop out, parenthesis, uh, pr uh, quotation mark, I forgot what that was, um, ping pong, and then end quotes and end parentheses. So what this is going to do, I'll first just show you, it's going to ping pong our keyframe data forever. And we don't have to animate over and over again. It's going to do it for us. You can see it kind of pulsating. And that means... It starts here, and then it's going to go to there, and then it's going to go back and forth and back and forth as the time goes on. The other option we could do if we didn't want it to ping pong is we could change that word ping pong oops, to cycle. And what this will do, which is quite similar, C-Y-C-L-E, oops, C-Y-C-L-E, is it will cycle through the keyframe. So it starts at the beginning and then it goes back. So different kinds of animations could benefit from this, but this is... Those are the two expressions I really use to make this, is the, the cycling and the, and the looping. Let's go back to the ping pong. 
So that kind of just ping pongs back and forth. What I'm gonna do is add a little bit more fluid, fluidness to this uh, pattern. So what we can do is grab our two keyframes. And if you're on a PC, you can just hit F9 on the keyboard. If you're on a Mac, you can. So you'll hold the function key and you'll hit F9. And then what that does is it creates an easing motion. So now instead of it kind of just bouncing back so harshly, it, it gently eases into each uh, direction. So that is the uh, ping pong effect with a little bit of easing on it. This is pretty much the effect. That's how you can use the repeater tool inside of Adobe After Effects to make these cool optical trippy uh, illusions. So the, just to kind of go over the, the takeaways, we used one JavaScript expression, that's that loop out ping pong. I'll have it on the screen right now so you can remember that. The other technique we used is this was all because this is a shape layer. So it looks like there's a bunch of objects on screen, but it's only really thinking about one of them. And it's that original host that we kind of put right there. Thank you so much for watching Creativity with DA3. Uh, if you want more inspiration and more secrets and tips on creative stuff, I would encourage you to listen to my podcast, Creativity with DA3 Podcast, uh, linked in the description below. It's a place for creatives to learn these pro tips and secrets about the industry and to get inspiration to thrive in any creative capacity. So thank you so much for watching and have a creative and productive day.